Hey friends, this is Jeff Morgan. Could it be a guilt-free bodybuilding supplement? I mean, a bodybuilding supplement company that has actually taken health into consideration? Well, I'm gonna find out. And if this is true, I may be changing the way I think and feel about bodybuilding supplements. My guest today is Jeffrey Palmer. He is a competitive, natural, vegan bodybuilder and is the founder and CEO of Clean Machine, an all-natural, vegan, sports nutrition supplement company. Mr. Palmer is a 31-year vegan with 25 years of experience in the natural foods and nutrition supplements industry with companies such as Whole Foods, The Vitamin Shop, 24-Hour Fitness, as well as several supplement and sports nutrition companies. As a nutritional supplement consultant, he's worked with companies such as GNC, The Vitamin Shop, and Trader Joe's, and has created products and built brands for several other companies. Mr. Palmer is a lecturer, an author, and a vegan supplement patent holder, and is a master's class, natural bodybuilding, and natural physique champion. Let's see what Jeff has to say about healthy bodybuilding supplements. Mr. Clean Machine, Jeff Palmer. It's so awesome morning. to find <laughs> good morning. It's so awesome to find someone that is a natural vegan bodybuilder who is also neck deep in the science of how the body uses its nutrients. You're like the perfect combination of action and knowledge. So it's really great to have you here as a representative of the natural vegan bodybuilding community and as an authority on vegan sports supplements. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do this interview. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. You do some uh, great work and I really enjoy your videos. So honored to be a part. Thanks, Jeff. I'm, I'm especially excited about this interview because the debates on supplements such as protein powder and BCAA supplements are simply out of hand and people that don't even know what these things really are are pushing them in all forms from all sources in high amounts. I mean, personal trainers worldwide are simply prescribing things to people that are potentially harmful. So I need you <laughs> to help set the record straight. But first, can you talk for a minute about how your plant-based natural supplement company, Clean Machine, was created? Yeah, absolutely. I've been in the industry for almost 30 years. And, you know, I am been involved in fitness since I was a uh, high school and uh, AAU junior Olympic swimmer, um, even into college. I love fitness and tying in that with health when I became vegan 31 years ago, um, I said, you know, both uh, make sense. Nutrition and fitness go together like peanut butter and jelly. I mean, it's a natural fit. But what I was seeing out there in the uh, nutritional field, like standing in a vitamin shop or something like that, I'd see half of the store filled with natural stuff that was health promoting. And the other half of the store filled with sports nutrition stuff that had a bunch of artificial crap in them and stuff that was actually being touted as dangerous and risky. Right. And I was like, well, why isn't somebody bringing those two things back together where they belong with health promoting, fitness promoting type nutrition? Um, so that's what I wanted to do. It's what it's the lifestyle that I live and it's what I'd like to give back to people and give them that option to have a, a natural, healthy choice that's also vegan. Well, that's awesome. I mean, so, so do do we need assistance from from bodybuilding aids? Uh, because, you know, building the body the way that you do, I mean, maybe even I do and other bodybuilders, uh, you know, isn't really a natural state. I mean, it takes a lot of work to hold on to that muscle and strength, um, you know, and, and establishing the right kind of diet to maintain it. So, you know, do we need assistance? Um, I, I think need may be a, a particular word that I don't agree with <laughs> Yeah, because I don't think anybody actually needs supplementation. Uh, what I think is for a choice, can it help? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, can you get advantages from taking supplements that you can't get from food? Yes, that's been proven over and over again in side-by-side -side comparisons uh, with research. Okay. So, yeah, you can get quicker results. You can get different results. Just like it would be kind of silly for me to say I can get the same results as someone taking steroids. It's impossible for me, physically impossible for me. So, yes, actually nutritional supplements. But are those supplements promoting health at the same time right. or are they you know, doing harm. That's where I draw the line and say, let's get as best results as you can possibly get through nature, through natural supplementation, without crossing that line of actually doing harm or damage to the body. Well, that's, I mean, that's a, that's a great mindset. And actually making that a reality is, 
it kind of can change the the supplement industry. And I'm I'm hoping to see that. I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got a great you got a great study out there, like the new ashwagandha study. It's right. a, it's just a natural herb. It's actually the most used herb in all of India. Um, now we use herbs like basil and oregano and our pasta. Why would you not use a specific herb that has all these health benefits? Uh, the study showed it improved testosterone, improved muscle gains, improved fat loss. I mean, these are all the benefits we're looking for. Why would you eat some herbs and not others just yeah. because they're labeled supplements? I mean, that's kind of a, you know, herbal discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So, okay, the difference between animal source protein powder and plant source protein powder, is it true that, that one is harmful and one can be uh, helpful? Absolutely. I mean, there's a huge difference. I, you know, I, when I hear people say protein, yeah, such a loaded question. Totally. <laughs> uh, you, look, you look at the proteins and they're completely different. Just like, you know, there are good carbs and bad carbs. Refined carbs have a very different impact on us. You can't just say carbs. No, there's okay. very different numbers. Just like fatty acids or fats or, you know, there are good fats and bad fats. Essential fatty acids are required for our life. So there's a real big difference between not only any three of those macros, but protein especially, because you've got you've got the, the composition of the proteins. Some are higher. Uh, animal products are higher in sulfur amino acids. They're higher in methionine, which has uh, been linked to cancers. Um, uh, you know, you've got case animal proteins that have been directly linked to cancers. All these things are very different, even when you break them down into their peptides. Now, when a protein is a long chain, when you cut it apart, when our digestive tract cuts it apart into these small chains, they're called peptides. Mm -hmm. Well, they're not just groups of amino acids. Peptides actually do things in our body. Those each can trigger nitric oxide or stimulate muscle growth. So they have specific functionality in our body different than just being a bunch of amino acids. Those peptides are specific to their proteins. Different proteins, different peptides, different impact on the body, both positive and negative. And one of the coolest studies showed, okay, so a high protein diet. The big question was, is this a negative impact on the body? What this study found was, yes, a 75% increase in mortality rate. That's horrible. And a 400% increase in cancer rates. I mean, yes, that should alarm anybody to a high, high protein diet. Right. But there was one sentence in that study that to me jumped out and should have been the whole study, which is they had plant-based proteins and animal-based proteins, both at high levels, the exact same amount of protein. But the one sentence in there read, the issues were either abolished or, or attenuated if the proteins were from plants. Means no rates in cancer, no rates in things, even wow. at the same high level of protein. So it's not the amount of protein, it's the type of the protein source. that's causing the problem. Yes, and I'm hearing that more and more, which is which is actually really comforting when, you know, going from a, a, an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet, and I'm, I'm trying to, you know, build my body now, and, you know, I keep hearing you need more protein, and you need, and I'm, and I'm trying to not get sucked into that. But at the same time, you know, the, like you're talking about, there's more and more proof that the, the dangers of high protein diet really are only coming from animal based protein. Absolutely. And the list goes on, not just for uh, look at, you know, one of the big things I say about a high protein diet is kidney issues. Right. Uh, Dr. Greger just did an amazing video on why animal proteins negatively impact kidneys right. and plant proteins do not. Wow. Check out the video on Nutrifacts.org. Plant protein is less acid forming in the first place because it tends to have less sulfur containing amino acids one of the reasons plant foods tend to be less acid forming than animal foods it's because acid is produced by the sulfur in the protein there's less in plant proteins so the more important determinant of the effect of dietary protein on kidney disease progression is the quality of the ingested protein. In other words, whether it induces acid production, like most animal protein, or base production, like most fruits and vegetables, rather than the quantity of protein ingested. You can clearly see over and over and over again, whether it's from cholesterol or saturated fats, or all these other negative impacts that are happening at a cellular level, don't happen with plant proteins. 
As a matter of fact, a follow-up study on that showed that uh, plant proteins reversed cancer rates, actually decreased cancer rates, even at a high level. Wow. So I'm, yeah, I'll put a link to that uh, video down in the description so people can uh, have easy access to that, because that's important. You know, so <clears throat> the necessity of protein powders and BCAA supplements, I mean, they're so popular. You know, could you talk about that for a second? Yeah, so um, look, I, I study research. There's one thing clinically proven over and over <clears throat> in every single animal species, all the way down to the single cell, that promotes longevity, overall health and increased lifespan. Okay. And that is cal calorie restriction. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, <clears throat> as a bodybuilder, we're trying to do the opposite. Right. We're trying to intake more calories in order to grow. But I think there is a difference where you can accomplish both at the same time. Now, mm -hmm. that requires nutrient density and macronutrient density. So micronutrients, all the letter vitamins and minerals, and macronutrients, so fats, carbs, and protein. If you can reduce the total caloric intake, yet increase your efficiency of protein, you can achieve both. You can lower your caloric intake and actually increase muscle at the same time. Now, wow. to me, that's the ideal state. Okay. That's one of the reasons why I use branch chains and, and protein powders. When you use a protein powder, there's very little carbs or no carbs and very little fat or no, no fat. So the protein is isolated. That means you're getting the protein nutrients without all those extra carbs and calories and from fat that are coming in. Um, this allows you to reduce your total daily's calorie intake while increasing your protein intake and meeting your muscle gain needs. Wow. Now, I'm all about the efficiency. So the, the branch chains is really what comes into play to increase, increase that efficiency. Okay, well, well, a lot of people would say, okay, but you still have to keep your glycogen stores up in order to maintain energy in the gym and so forth, so you don't get into a catabolic uh, state where your body's eating its own you know, muscle tissue and so forth. So how does that work? Absolutely. So it's, um, there's a, a popular thing out there called if it fits your macros. Um, so you can combine that. So you look at your total caloric intake for the day. Okay. And then you stack those calories close to your workout, either prior and more importantly, post-workout. Um, and that's where you get the bulk of your calorie intake because you're feeding the work. Okay. So you're creating the demand in the body to need those nutrients, and then you're feeding it abundant amount of nutrients. So you're moving a lot of your calories to that point in the day to get that done. That way it doesn't store as fat. It gets used for glycogen and other things like that, but you're minimizing your total caloric intake. I see. Because I actually did that intuitively. Because people sometimes look at my diet because it's in some of my what I eat videos, and they say, how can you eat so few calories? I mean, I eat maybe 2,700 to 3,100 calories a day. And to most people that are working out and building muscle, whatever, they think that's a few. So what I've done intuitively is I, I eat a, a relatively large breakfast relatively about an hour before my workout with a lot of fruit and you know things that are relatively easy uh, easily digestible and then when I come home from my hour and a half workout I'm starving I'm really hungry and I eat probably upwards of a thousand calories in a meal and then the rest of the day I'm eating really small portions for the rest of the day so my, my, my the majority of my calories are coming around my workout and it kind of happened that way on its own well, that's, that's perfect intuition. You're, you're listening to your body, and that's exactly the way your body wants to be fed. Okay. Um, remember, food is anabolic, and you want that anabolic growth spurt to happen right after you've created the work. Okay. So you want all that machinery, the hormones to go up, growth hormone, testosterone, all those things kick into play when you eat a big meal. Yeah. Um, and that's when you should have it. So nutrient timing is, is very important. If you want to be efficient with staying lean yet maximizing your growth. Okay, I got it. So bo bodybuilding and health are not synonymous, as well as bodybuilding supplements are not synonymous with health, as well. You know, necessarily, you've created pr products that focus on both fitness gains and health, which is rare in the sports supplement industry. I mean, how did you do this? Because all that know me <laughs> know that I've distanced myself from all sports supplements because I don't separate fitness from health, and you don't either. So you created bodybuilding aids that actually promote health, but what I like to call guilt-free. 
<laughs> well, I mean, to me, they go hand in hand. They should never have been separated because it's really led to a big misunderstanding of what proper nutritionally balanced and health promoting supplements can do both for fitness and for health. Like let's take cell block 80, the very first product I, I produced. Um, it's a, it's an herb that's from a cactus. Um, it's a couple of herbs. It's actually three herbs and a mineral, um, but it's from a cactus flower. Now this cactus flower is an amazing plant and it's shown to um, elevate testosterone by reducing the uh, spillover effect of testosterone converting to either estrogen or, or DHT. Now, both of those can cause negative side effects like breast growth, fat gain, that's estrogen, hair loss, prostate issues. Well, when I saw that, it was amazing. And I said, this has tremendous health uh, attributes too. So the number one complaint of men over 50 is low T. Low t. And I know because okay. I experienced it myself. After taking my supplement, Within five weeks, I doubled my testosterone levels. Whoa. I had five other people do it, testing before and testing after. All of them got at least 100% increase or doubled their testosterone up to 273%. You can see that results right on our website. That's and incredible. This, and this is from your product called Cell Block 80, which is a, it's, it's a natural supplement that comes from, a, a, you said a cactus? A cactus flower, the cactus actual flower. sexual organ of the plant. So, okay. Yeah, well, so well it controls its own hormone levels through its flower, um, but it does the same thing when we consume it, which is incredible. But, but the biggest thing about elevating testosterone that you have to con uh, be concerned with is right. that it puts you at risk for prostate issues. Okay. Now, prostate cancer is the number one fastest growing cancer in men in the United States. Actually, one in six men in the United States will get prostate cancer in their lifetime. It is the, the most biggest health concern for men over 40, period. 50% uh, of all males in the United States have BPH or prostate issues. What's cool about this is that not only did it boost T, but it actually, in two published human clinical trials, reduced prostate issues by 80%. There's never been a single herb ever to show to elevate T while reducing prostate, getting the health benefits while reducing the health risks. Hmm. I mean, that's exactly what you want out of anything that you would consume. Right, right. Okay, so why do you believe that a lot of vegan athletes are promoting the high carb diet? I mean, it seems like everything now is high carb, low fat, low protein, moderate protein, and so on. I mean, crazy. In a conversation that you and I had uh, a while back, you mentioned the importance of the right amounts instead of insisting on high amounts or low amounts. You know, talk to me about that for a second. Yeah. Now, look, I understand there's an emotional response. Uh, at being vegan for 30 years, we any new vegan, the very first question I get is where you get your protein, right? So, and and we consume a lot more carbs. And then there's been this demonization of carbohydrates too, as well. So there's a natural response to say low protein and high carbs, just to be in your face to the high protein, low carb group that is dominates the space and thinking. Right. Um, I think that's an emotional response and not really looking at the physiology of the human body. Um, you know, you have uh, Dr. Pritikin many right. years ago saying low fat, low fat, low fat. Now we know essential fats are not are very necessary and that a low, extremely low fat diet can actually be damaging to health. Then you had Dr. Atkins, low carbs. And then of course we looked at all the negative health impacts of low carb diet or ketogenic diets long-term. And that's not a good thing too. And then the high protein diet. And of course the studies have come out showing how that had a negative impact, just as long as it's not plant protein. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I think these are all just fad diets taking one of the macronutrients to the extreme. Look, right. there are good carbs and bad carbs. There are good fats and bad fats. There are good proteins and bad proteins. Let's focus on getting the right amount of the right type of carbs, fats, and proteins. To me, you know, all right, I'm gonna announce it right here on Yip Free TV. I am announcing the Palmer Healthy Appropriate Carbs, Fats, and Protein Diet. <laughs> so that's, that's how people should think about it then, you know. What is my personal appropriate amount? 
So, you know, I see this all over the Internet and all over YouTube, the debates on, you know, the high carb thing. I mean, some people actually post that, you know, I went on a high carb diet and got fat. I went on a high carb diet. My triglycerides, you know, jumped up. I went on a high fat diet and it made me feel sick, you know. And so obviously, you know, one size does not fit all. So this is what you're saying. Totally agree. Uh, there's so many different cofactors that play your metabolism, your thyroid levels, your level of exercise, your age, your gender. All of those come into play in how your metabolism works and what you respond to. Your microbiome, your, your digestive tract, your digestive health. If it's compromised, you're not going to do better or worse with some of those macronutrients. And you do need to shape it to fit your personal needs. Wow. Okay. I think that's one of people's biggest challenges is to take something that they see in a video and not necessarily copy it, but take the concept and make it personal and their own. I mean, there's so much focus on how many grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And I get this question all the time. How many grams per kilogram of protein should I shoot for? Some say 0.8 grams per kilogram, all the way up to two grams per kilogram. I mean, how can you give people an answer that will be something they can understand and that's logical. Yeah, and, and to me, I just toss all of that out the window because there's so much debate on where the right level is for the appropriate amount of person. And again, you're talking about a 200 pound, 250 pound guy using steroids. <laughs> it's protein intake, it can be completely different. Right. So this, again, this is not a one size fits all. So I've come up with just a basic simple thing that I think most people can apply, which is, how much protein can the body actually take in? And so there is a digestive period. These are physiological facts that we know. Uh, your body digests so much protein uh, uh, per hour because it is only absorbed in a certain part in the digestive tract. Um, so I go by a certain rule of just roughly about 30 grams of protein, probably a little less for women based on your body or body weight or size um, or your exercise but roughly around 30, because that's about what they've shown over and over. There's been several studies that actually show increasing up to 50 and all the way up to 90 grams should zero difference in muscle uh, protein synthesis. Okay, well then that, so, that if, 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 if past 30, the person isn't really getting any more protein synthesis, then they're just basically gonna be turning those calories to fat then, right? Or actually, it could be even worse because what those calories do then is then turn to the gut, and then the gut then starts to use them, the micro microorganisms in there. Now, if you have a high protein diet, you're feeding a very certain type of micro uh, probiotic. Mm -hmm. um, they're called bile friendly because bile is increased when there's lots of protein. Okay. Long story short, it changes your whole internal structure when you overconsume calories, whether it be from fat carbs or protein. Okay. And that affects your nutrient absorption. So ideally you want to keep efficiency. It's, to me, it's all about efficiency. Now, right. can you increase the efficiency of those proteins and foods? Yes. You can take a digestive enzyme and they've shown you can increase the amount of amino acids going into the bloodstream by up to 200%. So what that tells me is that you can actually eat the exact same amount of protein, one from food and one from say a supplement, if you take an enzyme with either one of those, you're gonna increase the amount of amino acids actually reaching the bloodstream that can be used to build muscle. Now you can take that one step further and add branch chains to it. Branch chains have shown when you add branch chains to amino uh, to proteins, a 33% increase in muscle protein synthesis. So at the cellular level, more of those amino acids are getting into the cell and creating muscle gain. Okay. Well, don't you so have a yeah protein efficiency? Okay. Well, don't you have a, a popular BCAA uh, product in your lineup? We do, and and there are uh, three things that basically um, help have shown to help testosterone being one, which is why I released Cell Block eighty branch chains, um, which is why we have the the clean branch chains, right? One hundred percent natural. It's fermented. So from uh, non-GMO corn, it's gluten-free and all that, and it has coconut water in it. Um, so think of fermentation. When you eat a protein, your body goes through a fermentation process to extract those amino acids. This is doing exactly the same thing, just outside your body. Just like uh, Bragg's amino acids, that is fermented proteins broken down into amino acids. 
So all fermentation, whether it's tempeh or soy sauce, those are all fermented products. Same process, same process inside the body. I see. And that's why it can be health promoting instead of because it's a natural product going through the natural process as it would if it was in the gut. Exactly. Or nice. even in a fermentation process outside the gut, like sauerkraut or right. aminos. Right. That's great. And that's one of the reasons why people promote also a, a, a diet high in fermented foods. Absolutely. Lots that's of health benefits. Great. That's great. We've got, I have so many more questions for you. So I'm going to have to have you on again. Uh, you're, you're just such a world of knowledge. I mean, is there anything that you'd uh, uh, like to offer viewers uh, as motivation to try the Clean Machine uh, product line? Yes, absolutely. So um, for uh, all the, just specifically the uh, Guilt Free TV viewers, uh, you can actually use uh, uh, GFTV as your code and you'll get a discount on any of our products anytime just for watching. So does that work for, you know, people all around the world or just in the states where you live? Unfortunately, that's just for the uh, United States. Uh, hopefully soon we'll have that uh, in distribution in Canada and in Australia coming. Okay. And, and where, where would they look for your products if uh, they don't live in the United States? So um, uh, outside the United States, you can order our products. Uh, uh, veganproteins.com ships globally. Okay. Or you can get them. Uh, nationally at cleanmachineonline.com. Awesome. Well, I'll put all the links to that stuff in the description down anyway. But uh, Jeff, <laughs> it was awesome talking with you. I got to have you on again. Thank you so much for your knowledge, experience, and time. Oh, well, thank you. And can't leave without Jesus. Where'd you get that thing? That's incredible. <laughs> I found it it's right around the corner. <laughs> Sometimes I see people ask, I'm like, I bought it at the gym. But <laughs> that's that's amazing. I mean, you're a great example of of what you can do naturally so you know thanks for showing that <laughs> my pleasure take care jeff in the pursuit of health and truth it's important that i keep an open mind i mean have i been holding on to beliefs that have been keeping me from attaining my goals i mean i've been against bodybuilding supplements for a long time but part of that was emotionally based because i like to see what the body's capable of doing without them also because most bodybuilding supplements out there can be considered harmful to human health. I still plan on continuing developing my body without them, but thanks to Jeff and his company Clean Machine, my mind is now open to natural and health promoting bodybuilding supplements. And who knows, maybe I'll try them out in the future. I mean, think about it. There are people in this world that will never stop taking bodybuilding supplements, even if I don't take them. And if they can be exposed to a natural plant-based supplement, then once again, it benefits the animals, human health, and the environment. And that, for me, is the ultimate goal. I'm providing links down in the description to the studies that Jeff was talking about, and also links to the Clean Machine product line. And just remember, beliefs are only good if they continue to benefit you.